friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter three talking about reviews and moving into the next segment of this chapter that is 3.4 matrices for the review. If you remember from the previous chapter or previous topic of this chapter that is we spoke about several uh, matrices which can be applied at, uh, at test process level and specific to the test activities as well and uh, these matrices uh, definitely have a recognition and significance as a part of the process to matrix the uh, to progress uh, monitor and uh, definitely add more value in terms of determining what necessary control actions would be required at any point of time. And that's where the matrices uh, are still important when it comes to review as well. And being a test manager, you take uh, certain matrices into considerations to measure a lot of other things which we will be understanding today. So to begin with, of course, uh, the review leader, which we know that is could be a test manager as well must ensure that matrices are available to evaluate these kind of things. That is, to evaluate the quality of the reviewed item, to evaluate the cost of conducting the review, to evaluate the downstream benefits of having conducted the review. Now, these are the three variants which we can basically cover everything under that. Now, number one is, of course, the quality of the work uh, item which you are reviewing. So what kind of outputs do you receive? Uh, from the work item or the review process when you have actually done a formal review process on a particular document and uh, it all depends on the number of defects being identified at any point of time and several other factors which will be seen in the upcoming slides and evaluate the cost of conducting the review where of course you allocated a budget during the planning of the review process and uh, Finally, when you actually executed the process and once you're done completing it, you do measure that what was uh, the actual cost which was invested from uh, the point of time and effort which was required to implement the same thing and uh, perform them and evaluate the downstream benefits of having been conducted the review. So even uh, certain matrices can be utilized to determine that what kind of uh, reduction in number of defects will be possible based on the outcome of the reviews which you have conducted and what value added uh, you know, benefits you will be including in your process by conducting a review at the beginning of the process for a particular work item. And that may further depend or rely on uh, various dependencies that what kind of documentation is being derived using a particular document which was reviewed. So keeping an eye on these kind of things, we'll be actually understanding in detail that what are these matrices which can fulfill these three evaluation parameters. The review leaders can use the measurement to determine the return on investment as well and efficiency of the reviews. These matrices can also be used for reporting and for process improvement activity. So at any point of time, matrices are just not limited to measuring a particular dimension. Sometimes these matrices put together can be derived to determine what kind of improvement actions can be taken in upcoming reviews to be conducted or maybe upcoming projects when we apply these techniques once again in upcoming future projects. Then of course, these things uh, will be very added benefit to derive from uh, the statistics or the matrices which you have collected which will give you a lot of uh, detailed information about uh, the loopholes, which you can obviously improve. Further to add here, of course, uh, we are talking about certain list of matrices uh, for each work product being reviewed. The following matrices can be measured and reported for the product evaluation. Number one, product work product size, which is can be measured as a uh, number of pages which you are going through or lines of code in case of code review. Preparation time prior to the review that what uh, number of what amount of duration you have provided to the reviewers was, was that effective because later if you don't find any good outcomes you look into these factors that uh, was that time which was allocated to the reviewers for preparing or finding defects was enough or not or if you realize that no that was not enough or that was too much then you try to rework on those things uh, in the upcoming plans. Time to conduct the review was that adequate? That means the duration which was provided to conduct a review meeting and uh, collect all the necessary information. Rework time to fix defects that how frequently or how uh, you know, quick the author has resolved the issues which were reported. Was that taking a long duration or it was quickly resolved? Duration of the review process put together for the entire process to be conducted right from the day one when you started the planning and finally when you called off or completed the exit criteria. Number of defects found and their severity. 
identification of defects cluster within the work product that basically is a major area to be identified if you have found such things then definitely you have a great achievement uh, throughout the conduction of the review process type of review which you applied should also be monitored and kept into consideration that uh, for example if you found some good number of defects with help of uh, walkthrough and uh, probably didn't get good the number of defects from technical review then of course uh, you know you can give more weightage to conduct a walkthrough as a type of uh, review process wherever it's best applicable it's just not a replacement just because of the output it's just that you know you can make most out of those opportunities average defect density like defects per page or per thousand lines of code which you can also measure that what number of defects you found and uh, it's not about like finding the defects rather we will try to uh, improve the previous activity where the lines of code are written by the developers and ask them to improvise themselves to make more efficient number of or amount of code and uh, estimated residual defects like we just have an estimation that okay no matter we found around 30 to 40 defects during this review but still we estimate that at least 10 uh, percent of this will still be found during the uh, dynamic testing which is always estimated because you uh, obviously being human beings you cannot uh, detect 100 percent possible defects and in fact the principle of testing also says that uh, testing does not prove the absence of defect no matter static or dynamic so yes, so these are certain list of matrices which we basically utilize during the review process and the test manager should be considerate about the same. Also to add for each review, the following matrices can be measured and reported for process evaluation. So the previous matrices, whatever we saw, that was from the point of product evaluation. Now we are talking from the point of process evaluation. So we have certain matrices like defect detection effectiveness, uh, improvement of uh, review process effort and timing so if you talk about detection effectiveness that means how efficient the process was in order to identify a defect where people were just taking it casual or people were serious about it and the effort what they have put has returned into some of the good detections or severe defects to be found or definitely improvement of the review process effort and timing depends on that like uh, whether it was too much or too less and how we could add more value to it Percentage coverage of planned work done. Percentage coverage of uh, planned work done basically uh, goes with the uh, what number of coverage you received based on the plan. For example, you may have uh, you know certain lines of code, but uh, whether you achieved 100% coverage on that or not, or you skipped some of the paths uh, when it comes to the code review. Just like uh, statement coverage and decision coverage, you do have a coverage measurement here on the work document, which is under review process. Types of defects found and their severity that plays a vital role from the process point of view. So don't worry, you may sound that uh, you know some of the matrices are common in both of them. So it's not that a conflict. These are common matrices which will be helpful in both the ways to evaluate the product quality as well as the evaluation of the process. Participant surveys about effectiveness and efficiency of the review. Not all the time being a manager, you decide that how was the process, whether it needs improvement or not. Sometimes we definitely have to ask our reviewers that what do you think was that the time provided to you was adequate enough or sufficient enough to perform these activities? Or do you think that if we could have provided you a little more time, you could have resulted in finding more defects and more better outcomes from the review? So we do consider their feedbacks and suggestions to add more value to the review process cost of quality matrix for review defect uh, review defects versus dynamic test defects to measure that which approach is more effective for you in terms of conducting in static testing or organizing and conducting the dynamic testing correlations of the review effectiveness which could be definitely from the point of uh, how the effectiveness can be correlated like review type versus defect detection effectiveness which is like in case so we conduct informal reviews for test cases being written then uh, test case review what kind of defects it is finding and if we conduct an inspection of certain work documents and contracts then uh, what is the outcome of that so you always keep a comparison between the different types of review to see how exactly which uh, technique is more efficient and more effective at the time of conducting review and number of reviewers uh, of course is a measure that how many people participated to add this benefit to the process defects found per hour uh, per work hour expanded that means uh, we do measure them from the point of number of hours allocated for activity and based on per hour basis also you will determine the number of defects found 
and finally estimated project time saved average defect effort that means uh, number of uh, uh, estimated effort what you have basically reduced by finding these defects much earlier in the life cycle or also can include the total detection and fixed time divided by the number of defects that's the measure which you can apply in order to measure this matrix now of course we got a quick idea that how exactly the matrices are available and what kind of matrices you can make use of in order to evaluate the quality of the product as well as the process when being conducted within the organization and it's very crucial for the test manager to make sure that he or she knows about these matrices and should be responsible for conducting the same and uh, making sure the right set of uh, matrices are selected and applied at the right point of time well that was all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning